Hey friends, welcome back for Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Seabard School. But here for Teaching in Room 9, all of my lessons focus on math for second graders. Everyone's always encouraged to join them. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm really excited to be here together with you and to do some learning here together. And I appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here with me. All right, friends, so you know we always start with our mindful minute exercise. As I had mentioned yesterday, we're gonna just focus on doing some mindful breathing here together. So we'll take some deep breaths in through our nose, out through our mouth, and then after about three deep breaths, you're gonna keep taking those deep breaths here together, um, but I'm gonna to talk to you about some different things that you can do in order to try to manage your anxiety. Anxiety is just those feelings of stress. Whenever you start to feel really overwhelmed, maybe stretched kind of thin, um, maybe it looks like feeling really tired, really frustrated, angry, sad. It can really come about in a lot of different ways. So it's really important for us to just be really aware and present with ourselves so that we know how that we're feeling. And when we start to feel this way and notice these big feelings or emotions, then we can start to use some of these strategies in order to help us calm down. All right, so if you're sitting, sit nice and straight and tall, shoulders back, relax any tension you might be having in your uh, jaw, your forehead, your chest. Just really relax, loosen up, and we'll take a deep breath in through our nose, counting to three, and out through our mouth, counting to three. Ready? Breathe in through your nose. And breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. Out through your mouth. Take another deep breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Amazing job. Keep taking those deep breaths in and out. Just listen to my voice as we start to talk through some of these different strategies you can use when you're feeling a little stressed. All right, so for today, um, I just wanna focus on tuning in to your five senses. If you've been here and following along with me for teaching in room nine, I've talked a lot about how mindfulness, a really big part of that, is slowing your body down and being very aware of your five senses. So as you're taking deep, mindful breaths in and out, what are some things that you can smell, some things you might taste? What can you hear? If your eyes are open, what can you see? And what can you feel or touch right now? Where are your hands? What is the fabric like on your clothing? Are you standing or sitting? Feel anything underneath your feet. Just taking those moments to really slow down and be aware of your body and your five senses in that present moment helps you to recenter and feel more grounded. Another thing that you can do, which I kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday, is practicing gratitude. So we were talking about journal writing yesterday. And I said that one of the ways that I like to write in a journal is uh, writing in a gratitude journal. Just writing a couple of different things each day that I feel so very grateful for really helps to kind of train your brain and um, take a, a moment to really just be so grateful or thankful for the things that you have in your life. And then sometimes that kind of helps when you're feeling really overwhelmed. Even though things might feel kind of big right now, I can understand that, respect it, and know that I still have all these amazing things in my life that I'm very grateful for. All right, friends. So whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes. We're gonna go ahead and jump right into our learning here together. Hopefully that helped you to feel calm and centered and ready to learn. All right, friends. So our learning objectives this week are I can use the relationship or my understanding of the relationship between addition and subtraction 
in order to solve. So again, we've been working so hard. You guys have been amazing working on using um, number lines. We used so many different strategies last week with addition and subtraction, um, using an open number line, and really just breaking apart numbers and thinking about different ways that we can put them together in order for us to solve. So this week, I really wanna kind of tie that together. Let's think about, friends, how we can look at our addition problems and reverse it and figure out how we can turn that addition problem into a subtraction problem and using that relationship and our understanding of the relationship between addition and subtraction in order to solve. And um, in one of the ways that we're doing that this week, we're focusing on I can make a 10. So we're working on making a 10, breaking apart the add end or the number that you're taking away and breaking it into numbers for us to make a friendly number. And then in, in doing that, we're making 10, and then we're able to make our jumps on our number line from there in order to solve. So since we are working on uh, making 10, I thought this would be a perfect time for us to uh, sing and do this chart here again together. So you maybe remember this chart or this song that I've done here together before, but I thought there's no harm in us just practicing it together again, getting it nice and fresh in your brain. Uh, so you know those 10 strategies, really easy peasy, so that when we're solving, it comes really naturally for us. So again, this chart here is decomposed 10. I know the top part here is cut off, um, but you can see right here, I have 10 red counters and zero yellow counters. So right down here is 10 plus zero gives me 10. And then you can see on this side, it's the flip or the reverse of that. I have 10 yellow counters and zero red counters. So over here, it says zero plus 10 equals 10. So um, as we sing along, I like to point to both sides. So you can see both sides of, the, um, of that version, zero and 10 and 10 and zero. And then we meet together in the middle for five and five. All right, friends, you ready to sing along with me? All right, let's do it. 10 and zero, nine and one, eight and two, eight and two, seven and three, six and four, five and five, five and five. Nice job, friends. I know you remember that, and it's a nice, easy song for us to sing along together. Um, obviously, I like to sing songs with my friends, and it's good for us to practice these different strategies so that we're feeling really confident when we solve here together. So we're going to come back to this again tomorrow, and we're going to review this strategy here that we used last week. So we used it yesterday. We used it all week with our... Um, addition and subtraction equations. And we're also working again with our fact families in order for us to be able to solve. So this strategy again is break up one add end where the number that you are adding and add in a different order. So we are uh, basically decomposing or breaking apart the number we are adding or the number we're taking away um, and then doing it in a different order so that we're able to make a 10 get nice friendly numbers and be able to make our hops and our rivets from there. All right, and we also talked yesterday about this week is the election. This is such a huge, big, big, big thing for our country. So I wanted to incorporate it into our lessons here together. Uh, yesterday we worked on solving for a um, class president and now I thought we could solve for a second grade president. So maybe one president for all the different second grade classes in one school together. So we're gonna do the same thing. We'll start solving for our fact family. All right, so we're, the first thing we're gonna do is 28 people voted for candidate A. So let's write that here. 28 people voted for candidate A. And then, 24 people voted for candidate B. I want to know how many people voted in these second grade classes. Okay, so here I've got 24. I'm adding that on to 28. So let's go ahead and do exactly like our strategy says and break apart that add end. So how could we break down 
2024. What do you guys think? Did I hear a friend say tens and ones? You guys are amazing. You're absolutely right. That's a super easy way for us to break down a two digit number. We can look at our number and know that there are tens and ones in a two digit number. So if we did that, how would we break apart 24 into tens and ones? I heard a friend say that there are two tens in 24. You're absolutely right. Two tens is 20. And then how many ones are there in 24? You got it, four ones, right? We can see in 24 right here, we can break it down into two tens and four ones. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw my number line up here. Let's switch this guy up. Here's our number line. We're starting at 28, and I wanna get to add 24 to get the total number of votes that we had for our second grade president. So this isn't just one class. These are all the second grade classes together. All right, now I can break down my ones even more. What are some ways I can break down four? Did I hear a friend say zero and four or four and zero? Absolutely, what's another way we can break down four? I heard three and one are one and three, nice job. What's another way we could break down four? Did you say two and two? Oh, you are amazing. Absolutely, we can break down four into two. And these two here, two and two together, give us a total of four. All right, so I'm at 28. I wanna get to a friendly number. What friendly number am I super duper close to? You are amazing friends. I know all this practice, we're really getting good at this. 28 is so close to, let me hear it. 30, nice job. So we want to get to 30. So we went up two, right? 28, 29, 30. So we went up two. All right. So we did this guy here. Now, now that we're at our friendly number, what do I add on from here? Where do I go from here, friends? Did I hear somebody say, add the tens, add 20 on, you're absolutely right. Once we get to that next 10, then we're able to add onto that friendly number. 20 is a nice super friendly, or 30 is a nice super friendly number. So now we can add on this big guy here, these two tens for 20. So if we add 20 onto 30, so we got a big jump, zoop of 20. Now where am I at, friends? You are so smart. I heard a friend say 50. You are absolutely right. 30, and I add on two tens, 20. So 30, 40, 50. Nice job. So now we've done our tens. We've done some of our ones, but what's left? I've got my two and my 20, but it's not 22 that I'm adding, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh, it's 24, you're right. All right, so how many more do I have to add on? If you said two, you're amazing. Nice job, friends. If you said something other than two, you're also amazing. <laughs> if you add on two here, friends, then we go from 51 or 50 to 51, 50. Two. So we did those last two here. So now you can also look at it and see, I made 20 jumps here or hops here, two and two, 20, two, four. So how many votes did I have all together? We had 28 that voted for candidate A, 
I broke down 24 into different numbers. We did tens and ones and then broke down the ones even more so we could add on to friendly numbers. And I got a total of how many votes all together? You got it, friends. We landed at 52. Solid work, my dears. All right, now we get to see that relationship between addition and subtraction. So we're gonna start now at this end of the number line. So we're gonna start at 52 this time. Okay, let's get rid of this A and B. Okay, so now I'm going to, this time I added on 24, I'm gonna take away 24 now. So again, having a hard time remembering this week, friends, how did I break down 24? Did you say tens and ones? You're absolutely right. We break down two digit numbers into tens and ones. If I broke 24 down into my tens and my ones, I would break it down into how many tens, how many ones? I heard someone say two tens, two tens is worth 10, 20, and our ones, four. Okay, now I'm all done, right? Did I hear somebody say I need to break down my ones even more, just like I did before? <laughs> you guys are so awesome and smart and you have been working so hard and following along so well. So we broke down 24 in the exact same way, didn't we? We broke it down into tens and ones, and then we broke down our ones into two groups. So we had four ones, so it was two and two. So now let's do it. Let's go backwards, friends. 52 minus 24, so I start at 52. I want to get to a really easy, friendly number. What easy, friendly number is so close to 52? You're amazing, friends. You're right. It's 50. Absolutely. So we've gotten this first two done for our ones. Now I'm at a nice, friendly number. Now I should subtract this other two, right? 50 minus 2 is 48. Should I do it that way? could do it that way. <laughs> I heard a friend say that now we should do those tens, right? That bigger number. Yes, because once we get to that friendly number, then it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy for us to be able to um, either add or subtract um, the, that big number, that 10 there. So now we're going to do that 20, right? You guys ready to make a big hop with me? And whoop, I went back 20. Now I got my tens done. All right, and I broke down my ones into four, and I broke my four into two, and I already did two, so how much do I have left? We're so smart, friends. You're absolutely right. I have to go to that last two now. So now I did my 24. I did two ones and two ones for those four ones in 24 and the 20 there. So this time I started at 52, then I took away 24 and I did the same process. I broke apart or broke down that number I was taking away into tens and ones and then I broke apart the ones even more so that they were able to make tens and make those friendly numbers for us to subtract. So now I just did the reverse of that first equation we did. So 52 minus 24 gave us Yep, 28. Nice job, friends. Now we get to do the other side of our fact family. Are you guys ready? Let's erase this guy here. All right, and we'll bring her down. So we've got plenty of room. So before we did 28 uh, votes for candidate A, 24 for candidate B, gave us a total of 50 two votes. Then we did 52 votes. We took away those votes, 24 votes from candidate B, and we got 28 for candidate A. So now let's flip it. So now instead of starting with our votes for candidate A, let's start with our 24 votes for candidate B. And this time, we're going to break apart 28 instead. So that means my number line 
will start at 24 this time instead of at 28. All right, now I gotta break apart 28, but I don't know how to do that. How do I break apart 28, friends? Did you say tens and ones? You guys are really amazing. All right, so 28, I break it down into two tens, which is 20, and eight ones. All right, now, I know that I've been breaking down our ones even more. So I can already see that I'm starting at 24. And I know just from practicing this so many times here together that I want to get to that next 10. So what's that next 10 from 24? How do I get to that next 10? I'm not sure, what do you guys think? I heard a friend say it, you guys are amazing. The next 10 up from 24 is, let me hear it. 30, nice job. How do I get from 24 to 30? What do I have to add on? Are amazing. If you go from 24 to 30, I think I hear some friends saying six, but we can also count up together. You guys ready? Let's count up together to 30. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So six need to get me to 30. So I'm still down here. I'm still breaking apart my uh, 28 into tens and ones. So I did that 20 and eight. Now I want to break apart eight again. And I know that I want to try to get a friendly number of 30. So how can I break apart eight in order for it to be that six I need to get it to 30? How can I break apart eight? What are some ways that we can break apart eight? And maybe that we can even use a six. What do you guys think? You guys are so good at this. So there's so many ways to break apart eight, right? We could do eight and zero, seven and one, um, four and four, five and three, but I know I wanna get six. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down my, my eight into six and what is it? Yes, six and two, nice job. So that's how we chose to break it down. And you guys even went through that process in my brain of how I go from 24 to my next clean, friendly number. So I knew I needed to use six to, in order to get me there. So that told my brain that I can break down my eight ones into six and two. So that way I can use that six in order to get to a friendly number. So we've already done those six there. Now, once I'm at a friendly number, do I add the tens? Or do I go back to those two ones? I'm not sure, what are you saying? All right, say it with me. One, two, three, we add the tens. Nice job. So our tens are 20, so I'm gonna go up, one big hop, ready? Hop with me and zoop, one big hop of 20. If I add 20 on the 30, where do I land? are amazing. It's absolutely right. 50, 30 plus 10 is 40 plus another 10 is 50. So now I've added on my 20. I've added on my six, but I'm not adding 26. What number am I adding? Yes, if you said 28, you're absolutely right. So what is that last little guy that I have to add on from those ones? Yep, it's the two. Zoop, went up two hops or little rivets to 52. So I was able here, friends, to figure out the other um, addition problem in our fact family. First, we did candidate A, candidate B to give us a total of 20, or I'm sorry, 52 votes all together. Now, I flipped it this time. I wanted to know 24 votes for candidate B. 
28 for candidate A gave me again a total of 52 votes. Now I've got to find my last subtraction problem in my equation. What's the first number that I would use in my subtraction problem for my last um, equation in my fact family? Yes, I heard a friend say 52. We start with that biggest number, right? Fact families are four equations using the same three numbers. So for subtraction, we're always, we're gonna start with that biggest number, 52 and 52. So again, I'm gonna do the reverse of it so that I'm able to figure out my last subtraction equation. So again, I'm gonna break apart the number I'm taking away, which is 28. How do I do that? I can't seem to remember anything this week, friends. If you said tens and ones, you're absolutely right, friends. How many tens? How many ones? Shout them out. Two tens worth 20. Nice job. And how many ones? Eight ones. You're amazing. And now I'm all done, right? No? What do I need to do now? Because I know I'm starting at 52 and I need to get to a friendly number. So what friendly number is 52 close to? You're right. It is. It's so close to 50. You're absolutely right. So again, I'm going to break down my ones into two and if I took two away from eight, how many would I have left? Yes, you're absolutely right, six. So again, we broke down 28 in the same way, didn't we? We broke it down in two, um, 20 and eight for our tens and ones, and then we broke down our ones into six and two. You guys ready to do the subtraction now? Okay, so we start at 52 here, just like we did. I wanna get to my friendly number of 50, so I know that I need to go back to we need to subtract two in order to get to that friendly number of 50. Then, once I'm at my friendly number, now I take away six, right? No? Friendly numbers, then I take away what? Yes, you take away the tens, which is 20. So now we hop back, zoop, 20. That's a big hop. So I went from 50 to 30. You're absolutely right. So now I've done my two here, and then I did my tens. Now how much left of my ones do I have to go back? All right, you are absolutely right, friends. I go back to 24. And so that gave me again, So this time I took my 52 votes, I broke apart my number I was taking away into tens and ones, broke down my ones even more to get friendly numbers, and then I was able to just do the reverse of the equation I had just done to give me a total of 24. Our votes for candidate B. All right, friends, you did amazing. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.